Hello Year 6, welcome to your maths video for Tuesday. Um, before we get started on today's work, I have got another beat it challenge for you today. Okay, so just like normal, we've got five different questions that I would hope you could have a go at mentally. Um, remember to do yourself a target um, and you could give yourself a challenge, you could set yourself a timer of maybe two minutes or one minute, 30 seconds and see if you can get these questions answered. Okay, so first one then, we've got 10% of 21. We are going to be having a look at percentages this week, but I know you all know how to find 10% of a number already. So have a go at that one. Number two is an inverse question. So you've got something add five is 301. Nine take away 1.5, 120 divided by 12. So for that one, you can use your known facts, can't you? And then the bottom one is 25.34 times 10. Okay. So don't forget to take a quick picture of it for me when you finish and then include it on your email for today. I will mark it and give you any feedback that you need. OK, so that's your starter challenge. Your work for today, then your learning question is, can I reflect and translate shapes? OK, so we're carrying on on the same theme as what we were doing yesterday. You all did an absolutely brilliant job on coordinates yesterday. I think we've cracked it. We're all quite secure with coordinates now and answering reasoning questions, which is absolutely brilliant. So well done. Um, and I think we are ready to move on today. So we're moving on to pages 68 and 69 today. OK, in the same book as we've been in for a while in our year six stretch book. OK. Before we go on to page 68 and before we even have a look at our work in our book, I just want to go over reflecting, okay? Okay, so when you are reflecting a shape, you've got to have a think about how it would look in a mirror almost, okay? So you've got to imagine, I know most of you won't have a mirror that you can put on, so that's fine. If you have got a small mirror, you could pop it on the line and that might help you. But if you haven't, don't worry. You've just got to imagine that it's there. Okay, so if, for example, then, you get a question that says, reflect the shape in the y-axis. Okay, you've got to know your axis for this one. So your y-axis is always this one and your x-axis is always this one. Okay, so your y-axis is your vertical line and your x-axis is your horizontal okay and that's important because if you don't reflect it in the correct axis then you, your question would be wrong okay so for example this one says so i've reflected this one in my y-axis so i've got my triangle here okay this is my y-axis so my shape then when it's reflected is going to be in this quadrant here okay so if i put a mirror here it would look like that okay so it's flipped that way hasn't it okay if then we were reflecting it in the x-axis it would reflect down here because this is my x-axis so your my shape would flip this way okay let's just have a look at what a rectangle would look like so i've got a rectangle here if i flip this in my OK, so it's going to be the exact same shape, isn't it? Because it's a rectangle. So it's going to look the exact same, but it has still flipped in my X axis. OK, so if we do it in the Y axis over here, obviously rectangles and squares are slightly easier to reflect because really you just need to move it along. Yeah, so as you can see, it's got three squares here. It's got three squares here. OK, so it's exactly the same distance from the axis. That's really important. You've got to be as accurate as you possibly can. OK, because if you're slightly out, then your answer would be wrong. OK, let's have a look at some of your questions then. So page 68 is all about reflecting. So I'll go through those and then I'll recap over translation before you move on to page 69. So. Question one says, reflect the shape in the x-axis. Don't worry about this second part, just worry about that for now. So you've been given this shape, 
and you've got to reflect it in the x-axis, okay? This is your x-axis. So your shape is going to be reflected down here. And I'll just do a really rough sketch to show you what your shape should look like, okay? So it should roughly be in that position, okay? But you've got to make sure you are really, really accurate. And I'll give you a little hint. They will overlap slightly. Okay. So think carefully how that shape would flip. How that shape would flip so that it looks like that one. Okay. Then it says, what are the coordinates of point A in the image shape? So basically, that's that saying, what is point A in your new shape? Where is point A? So point A is up here at the moment, okay? So when you've reflected your shape, point A is going to be down here. It's going to be in your bottom left-hand corner, okay? So once you've reflected your shape accurately, remember, try and use a ruler if you've got one or use the edge of your protractor. Um you need to have a look at what the coordinates are in this bottom left-hand corner. So remember what we went over yesterday, go along the corridor and then down the stairs, okay? And don't forget your minus signs. So that's question one. Question two then on page 68 is this one. It says reflect the shape below in the y-axis. Remember your y-axis is your vertical one. That's this one. So you need to reflect this shape onto this side. So because it's in the y-axis, your shape is going to be, your new shape is going to be in that quadrant. Okay. So it's quite an easy shape to, to reflect. Okay. So all you've got to do is think about how, how many squares it is in. So it's two squares in. So it's going to be here. It's three squares along. Okay. So it's going to look like that got two squares up, obviously you can draw yours much neater than I can, okay, so it's going to look something like that, but then the challenge is the T's, you've got to think really carefully of how the T in each section would reflect, okay, so that's your challenge for this question, have a good go. Then you have got a challenge question that I would like you all to have a good go at, it says, if you reflect the letter A in the y-axis, like they've done here, it will look the same. But if you reflect it in the x-axis, it will look different. Which other letters look the same when reflected in the y-axis? So that's your first task, is have a think about if you put a letter here, which other letters, if you reflected it that way, would look the same? Okay. Um, are there any others that will look the same when reflected in the x-axis? So can you think of any letters that when you reflected them this way, they would also look the same? Okay, so that's quite a tricky challenge. But I know if you go through the alphabet and think really carefully, I certainly can think of a couple of letters that would look the same. So have a think. And then it says, can you think of any words which can be reflected in the x-axis and still look the same? Okay, so have a go at that challenge. Okay, page 69 then is all about translating shapes and moving from one point to the other on a graph, okay? So I've got a question on my board that I'm going to go through. Um, it's very similar to your question one, but you haven't got Mrs. Carter and Mrs. Heavey in your book. So I'll go over this one and then you'll be able to apply what we do on the board to question one. Okay, so I'm going to say then, so we've got the swimming pool here, and we're going to say for Mrs. Heavey to get to the swimming pool, she's got to go two squares right and three up, okay? So I'm going to count from Mrs. Heavey, so Mrs. Heavey is here, so two squares right, three squares up, so one, two, one, two, three, okay? So that is where the swimming pool is, okay? So I can pop that on there, okay? So that's what you've got to do in your first question. You've got to count from Sheila 
and mark B. So where I've put my swimming pool, that's where you've marked B on yours. Then I've got to go, then Mrs. Evie, she's at the swimming pool now. She wants to get to Mrs. Carter. Okay, so then she's going to go one, two, three, four, five squares right. Okay, it's really important that you don't write five squares across because that could be either way. So just think carefully whether it's left or right. Okay, so on yours, it says Sheila walks five squares right and two squares up. So you've got to count five, five right, two up to arrive at the bank. So pop a little cross on and then pop, put a B for bank. Then you need to go from the bank, just like I went from a swimming pool to Mrs. Carter, you need to go from the bank to the post office and you've got to describe how to get there okay so there'll be a couple of different ways it's up to you um but you need to remember to say right or left not across okay so that's question one question two says translate the semicircles a and b on the grid below to create a circle where point y lies at two one describe the translations okay so you've basically got to put these two semicircles together so that they make a full circle okay so point y lies at 2 1 so point y is already here but we need to move it to 2 1 so that's your first job is find 2 1 so go along to 2 up to 1 so y i'm going to write y next to it is moving to there. So now I've moved that one, I can move my whole semicircle. Okay, so you now can put a point there, point there, join that one up, use a ruler. That's my full semicircle. Now you can put the other semicircle in. Okay, so this one now can move to here, can't it? It's got to move to here to make a full circle. Okay. In the box that you've been given, it says describe the translations. Okay, so you need to do two different translations, one for A and one for B. Okay, so we've already moved A, and if you move B, it will be there, won't it? So then your task is to describe how you've moved those shapes. So from Y to Y, how have you got there? So you've gone down one, one, two, three, four, five. You've gone down one and right five. Okay. Then you need to pick a point for B. So you could pick the same point if you want to, like you did for this one, or you could pick the top or the bottom. It's up to you. Okay. But then you need to count from this shape to this shape. So if you're going from the top, this is important. You've got to pick the same coordinate. So if you're going the top one, you need to forget these. And you need to go to this top one up here. Okay, so going from this one, so we're going right one, two, three. Oh no, one, two, sorry. So right one, two, and then up one, two, three, four. Okay, so it's up to you. You need to have a look really carefully which coordinate you pick, and then make sure you go to the same coordinate on your new semicircle. Okay, and then you need to write. Two little sentences in that box describing how to move A and how to move B. Okay, then you've got another challenge question to have a go at. And it says, a piece in a game can only move in an L shape. Two squares vertically and one square horizontally, or one square vertically and two squares horizontally, like this. Okay, so we've done a little example to show you. It says, can you find a way from the piece to get from the start to the finish? How many other ways can you find? Which one has the fewest moves? Okay, so you need to have a go at getting from start to finish using these kinds of arrows. Okay, so remember, you can only go two squares vertically and one square horizontally, or one square vertically and two squares horizontally. So, for example, if you're going from here, that's Two squares horizontal, one square vertical. Okay, so that's one move. 
change my colour so you can see another move. So we'll go two square colours on top. Okay, so I'm on the way up here. Um, let's go two squares vertical, one square horizontal. Keep going until you get to the finish. Okay, and see how many moves you can do it in. Okay, and then see if you can do it in fewer moves. Okay, so that's all of your work for today. Don't forget to take a picture of your Beat It Challenge and then all of your work and your challenge questions for today. I look forward to seeing them on the email later today. Okay, I'll see you all tomorrow.